Income tax 2022-2023. Interest income. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page we also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it when looking at the income tax formula we're focused on line one that being income remembering that the first half of the income tax formula is in essence an income statement which makes sense with an income tax although a strange income statement where we have income up top and then the expenses are basically in the form of deduction to get down to not net income but taxable income we're focused up top on the income line, which is deceptively small here, but note that we can expand that income line to think about the vast amount of things that might be included as income and the types of things that might be able to be exempt from income. The general rule from the IRS is that everything is basically income unless the IRS code says that it is specifically exempt. Here, we're going to be talking about interest income, which is usually going to have to be included in income and possibly have a subschedule in some cases, the schedule B. So if it's included in income, that's usually bad from a tax perspective because it'll increase the taxable income and therefore the tax will be applied to it. However, there might be some kinds of interest income that are exempt. So in that case, the tax code specifically saying, yes, you had income, but it's exempt for taxes. And therefore you might have to report it on the tax return, but not include it as taxable income, meaning it's not gonna have an increase uh, in the taxable income rate be applied to it. Okay. Now, when we're thinking about the reporting forms for the interest income, the form will generally be a 1099 INT, the 1099 interest. It might not look like this because they might kind of truncate it a little bit when it comes from your financial institution, oftentimes a bank or other kind of financial institution. And usually we have this box one, which would be the normal kind of interest income, which we would have to apply, but you could also have box two early withholding pen, uh, withdrawal penalty box three interest on us saving bond and treasury obligations box four federal income tax withheld often not the case withholdings that is when you have interest income although if you have a lot of interest income you can set your withholdings in it investment expenses foreign tax paid so if there's a foreign uh, situation with it then you have mixing up in or problems with the tax code between us and foreign countries so we have to have agreements possibly with foreign countries so that we don't have like a double taxation type of situation for the same income foreign country or u.s possession tax exempt interest so now we're talking about that type of interest that might be exempt for taxes and then specified private activity bond market discount bond premium bond premium on treasury obligations bond premium on tax exempt bond and then tax exempt and tax credit bond the CUSIP. So some of these boxes are less common than others. If you see something in here in a box that you're not familiar with, then you can of course look at the instructions and, and you get some more uh, information about what is included in that particular box. And that can also lead you on the journey of pursuing more questions about it if there's some more of an unusual type of situation now remember the general rule why would the bank or financial institution issue the 1099 interest because the government is basically going to be regulating the the financial institution so obviously you're going to get the 1099 interest the government's wanting them to give it also to the government to the irs therefore if you don't report something that's on the 1099 interest you will almost surely get some kind of notice from the IRS saying we got a 1099 that you didn't get and have some kind of adjustment uh, related to it. 
Okay, so the most of the information next is going to be coming from the 2022 instructions for Schedule B. The Schedule B is a schedule that you might have to use if your interest goes above a certain threshold. So that's the interest and ordinary dividends. And this is the line item on the first page of the Form 1040, where we have uh, line 2A, where we have the tax exempt interest here. And then we have B, the taxable interest. And then if your interest is above a certain threshold, you might have to have the Schedule B as well. We're focused on the Schedule B with the interest portion, which is part one, as opposed to what we'll look at later, the second part, the uh, dividend part. Okay, so you, we're gonna use Schedule B Form 1040 if any of the following apply. So this means that if you have interest, you're, you're typically gonna have to take that 1099 and report it uh, as income if you have interest income. If your interest income goes above a certain threshold, then you're gonna have to report it not only on the first page of the 1040, but you'll also have the Schedule B. You can test this out and we will test this out using tax software. Uh, as we start to populate uh, interest income, if it goes over a certain threshold, then you've got this second schedule. So we would use Schedule B. You had over 1,500 taxable interest or ordinary dividends. You received interest from a seller finance mortgage and the buyer used the property as a personal residence. Uh, you have accrued interest from a bond. You are reporting original issue discount. That's an OID of less than the amount shown on form 1099 OID, possibly more of an unusual situation for most uh, investors. You are reporting interest income of less than the amount shown on a form 1099 due to amortized bond premium. So we've got some special kind of circumstances with regards to the functioning of different types of bond uh, type of investments and you are claiming the exclusion of interest from series ee or ius saving bonds issued after 1989 you received interest or ordinary dif dividends as a nominee you had a financial interest in or a signature authority over a financial account in a foreign country or you received a distribution from or were a grantor of a transfer or to a foreign uh, trust so part one interest line one report on line one all of your taxable interest so obviously this would typically be from the the 1099 interest taxable interest generally should be shown on your forms 1099 int form 1099 oid or substitute statements include interest from eeh hh and ius savings bonds also include any accrued market discount that is includable in income and any gain on the contingent payment debt instrument that is includable in income as interest income. So it gets a little bit kind of messy on the certain kind of, of bond uh, uh, calculations. So usually it's a fairly straightforward situation, but you can imagine uh, weird kind of situations in the accruing and the interest of the bond due to the way the purchasing and the interest calculations of the bonds work if you buy them at a premium or a discount for example and so on so don't report on line one any tax exempt interest so we're not including the tax exempt portion there uh, because this is going to be the taxable line item so the tax exempt interest later for more information so for more information on stated interest original issue discount that's the oid market discount contingent payment debt instrument and premium you can see publication 550 and publication 1212 seller financed mortgages so this again somewhat of an unusual situation usually when you're looking at the schedule b or reporting interest it's fairly straightforward kind of situation but you have some of the, these kind of more unusual situations that could come up as well if you sold your home or other property and the buyer used the property as a personal residence list first any interest the buyer paid you on a mortgage or other form of seller financing be sure to show the buyer's name, address, and social security number. You must also let the buyer know your social security number. So if you don't show the buyer's name, address, and social security number, or let the buyer know your social security number, you may have to pay a $50 penalty. If you or the buyer do not have a social security number, use the appropriate TIN for the filer or recipient of form 1098. So that's the interest, you know, form for mortgage interest. 
So for more information, see general instructions for certain information returns 2022 nominees. Again, somewhat of a usual unusual situation here. If you received a form 1099-INT that includes interest you received as a nominee, that is in your name, but the interest actually belongs to someone else, report the total on line one. Do this even if uh, you later distribute some or all of this income to others. Under your last entry on line one, put a subtotal of all interest listed on line one below the subtotal enter nominee distribution and show the total interest you received as a nominee. Subtract this amount from the subtotal and enter the result on line uh, two. So basically you're giving them more information uh, in that case. So you're telling them, you know, this is the amount on, because you can see what's happening here, right? If you, the, the IRS is gonna have the form 1099 and you're basically saying, I've got this 1099 issued to me, but I think it should be going uh, to somebody else in essence. And so you're, you're basically listing out in the schedule that you have the interest to you minus the stuff that's going to someone else. So it still ties into the actual form 1099 and then tells the IRS where they need to go to get their money, which is someone else, right? So but tip. If you received interest as a nominee, you must give the actual owner uh, a form 1099-INT unless the owner is your spouse and file forms 1096 and 1099 interest with the IRS. For more details, see the general instructions for, for certain information returns and the instructions for form 1099-INT and 1099-OID. Accrued interest. So accrued interest is kind of, the interest has, has uh, increase, but possibly you haven't received the interest at that point in time. So when you buy bonds between interest payment dates and pay accrued interest to the seller, this interest, this interest is taxable to the seller. So if you received a form 1099 for interest as a purchaser of a bond with accrued interest, follow the rules earlier under nominees to see how to report the accrued interest, but, uh, identify the amount to be subtracted as accrued interest. So you might end up with a similar kind of situation, situation where the 1099 possibly has to be adjusted. Obviously you have to tie in the 1099 what's on it to what's on your forms or you're gonna have a problem. So if you need to have something different than that, you would want to show the detail of, of the change and the adjustment to it so that so that you could say hey this is what's on the 1099 this is why there's a change to it this is what i'm reporting after that change is taking place original issue discount the oid if you are reporting oid in an amount less than the amount shown in box one or box eight of form 1099 oid follow the rules earlier under nominees to see how to report the oid but identify the amount to be subtracted as oid adjustment similar kind of scenario here you got something possibly different than what's on the 1099 we've got to tie into what's on the 1099 we need to show the work show the detail so that we don't get uh, confused the irs and a confused irs with our particular tax return causes us problems however if the payer reported uh, to you a net amount of oid on the bond reflecting the offset of the gross amount of oid by any acquisition acquisition is confirmed the premium no uh, reduction of the amount of oid income reported to you by the buyer may be needed on schedule b for the bond amortizable bond premium so now you've got you know when you buy the bond if you're buying if you're investing in bonds then it's likely that if you're if you're a, a, a passive kind of investor a long-term investor you might be in investing in like mutual funds that have bonds within them which is a little bit different than investing like in individual bonds uh themselves uh but a bond when you think about a bond in general you're basically uh giving money like a, a note a loan in essence to a corporation or government entity and the rate on the bond is fixed so you might pay actually more than or less more or less than the face amount of the bond if you pay more than uh, the face amount of the bond, then you bought the bond at a premium and you've got to allocate basically the premium or the difference in, between the premium and the face amount is basically considered interest. And then you could deal with this kind of premium 
problem, right? You've got this kind of premium problem that could have taxable implications with it. So amortizable bond premium. So if you elect to reduce your interest income on a taxable bond by the amount of taxable amortizable bond premium, follow the rules earlier under the nominees to see how to report the interest. So if that is again the case, then you might end up with a situation where your 1099 isn't reporting the proper amount of interest after you take into consideration the amortizable bond premium and you're going to have to show your work again to not confuse the IRS. But identify the amount to be subtracted as ABP adjustment. So however, if the payer reported to you a net amount of the interest income on the bond reflecting the offset of the gross amount of interest income by the amortizable bond premium, no reduction of the amount of interest income reported to you by the payer is needed on Schedule B for the bond. Okay, so now we have the tax exempt interest. So this would be that scenario where it would have been income, but now the IRS is explicitly saying it's exempt for whatever reason that they they don't they're, they're going to give some benefit to certain uh, issuers or of of debt, right? Some beneficial, uh, which possibly are going to be the states, so the governments. Government. So if you if you give money to the loan money to the government then you might get a benefit. You could see why they might want to do that as a government entity. So if you received any tax exempt interest, including any tax exempt OID, such as from municipal bonds, so those are going to be government bonds in essence, each payer should send uh, you a form 1099-INT or form 1099-OID. In general, your tax exempt status interest should be shown in box eight of form 1099-INT. So we saw the 1099, it'll be indicated, not you would think in box one, but rather in box eight to say, hey, you gotta report this because you did get income, but it's tax exempt. So it shouldn't have a federal income tax component for it or, or, or a calculation to it. So for tax exempt OID in box two of form 1099-OID and your tax exempt OID should be shown in box 11 of Form 1099 OID. So enter the total on line 2A of your Form 1040, 1040SR. So that's to be the tax exempt place, I would assume. So however, if you acquire a tax exempt bond at a premium, only report the net amount of tax exempt interest on line 2A or your Form 1040 or 1040SR. That is excess of the tax exempt interest received during the year over the amortized bond premium for the year. So also, if you acquire tax exempt OID bond at an acquisition premium, only report the net amount of the tax exempt OID on line 2A of form 1040 or 1040 SR. That is excess of the tax exempt OID for the year over the amortized acquisition premium for the year. If you have more questions about that situation, you can see publication 550 for more information on OID bond premium and acquisition premium. Also, include on line 2A of your form 1040 or 1040 SR any uh, exempt interest dividends from a mutual fund or other regulated investment company. This amount should be shown in box 12 of form 1099 DIV. So we'll talk about dividends later. If an amount is shown in box nine of form 1099 INT, you must generally report it on line 2G of form uh, 6251. See instructions for form 6251 if you're in that situation. Line three, if during 2022, you cashed series EE or IUS savings bonds issued after 1989 and you paid qualified higher education expenses, for yourself, your spouse, or your dependents, you may be able to exclude part or all of the interest on those bonds. So if you've got those bonds in place, the EE bonds education, then you could take a look at form uh, 8815 for more details there.